I have a biodiesel motor on the software and I don't know anything. Relax, I'll help you out. I've been reading a lot about it and it's really interesting. Drosophila is called the fruit fly because it's commonly found near unripe and rotten fruit. Why do scientists have to complicate things? A fruit fly is a fruit fly. Why do you have to name Drosophila melanogaster? It's not as complicated as it sounds, you know. Perhaps if you know its meaning, it'll sound simpler. Drosophila means dew lover in Latin. And melanogaster means black belly. The first study of this black belly dew lover was done by Thomas Hunt Morgan. He found mutant fruit flies with different body and eye colors. And then he investigated how these mutations were arranged on his DNA and how they caused these changes. He showed that the genes responsible for these mutations were present in line, one behind the other on their chromosomes. Okay, so after his work, people started using fruit fly as model organism. Yeah, that's right. And people started using it to study all sorts of questions. Three scientists started studying how fruit flies develop. They generated mutations which gave rise to embryos which lacked head or tail region. How did they generate mutations? X-rays. So they create mutants and what? They found the genes responsible for the head and tail and then they found their locations. But why fruit flies? Why not some other organism? Something more close to humans? There are many reasons, you know. Short lifespan and many eggs can be obtained from just one copulation. Small and easy to grow in lab and so pure breeds are easily available for a specific trait. Only four chromosomes and their genetic sequence is completely known. Plus, the genetic structure is very close to human, you know. It seems that the fruit flies are used to understand the biology of many things. So, what all do they study with this fruit fly? Even I wanted to know that. Remember Aparna, the PhD student who works at the fly lab? She said she'll explain me some stuff, so I went to pay her a visit. So I went to the fly lab and talked to the professors and students working there. I even did a small experiment on the development of the embryo of the fruit fly. This is a cage in which the flies are kept. It is taken a gar plate with yeast growing on it. Yeast acts as a good protein source for the larva. Eggs are laid on the yeast. Next, I wash the plate using water to separate the eggs from the yeast with the help of a brush. Strain the eggs. The egg has two layers, chorion, which is white and opaque, and white line membrane, which is transparent. You cannot see the interior of the egg if the chorion is present. So you treat the eggs with bleach for about a minute. Bleach? The stuff we use to whiten our clothes. Yes. Bleach removes the chorion but not the white line membrane. Next, wash bleach with a wash buffer. Cover slip bottom dish acts like a microscopic slide. Um, it doesn't look like a slide. The confocal microscope is inverted. Its objective is at its base. Objective helps in focusing the light on the specimen. The specimen absorbs this light and then re-emits another light of different wavelength which passes straight through the objective and it gets detected by the detector. With the help of a stereoscope, the eggs are transferred onto the cover slip bottom dish using a brush. The cells that we observe are live, so we add phosphate buffer saline to keep the pH of the cells same. PBS is added to the cover slip bottom dish with the help of a micro pipette. MRI starts as a single cell. Oh yeah, 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 I studied the ninth standard. First the nucleus divides and then the cell, right? right? Yeah, but that's not what happens in most of the insects. The nucleus divides many times before the cell does. Uh, the embryo is basically a syncytion, so which means that the nuclei are dividing, but there is no complete cell boundary. So there is only an apical membrane and a lateral membrane, but basically the nuclei share a common cytoplasm. The fly embryo has a length of about half millimeter. The nucleus in the cell divides 13 times forming around 6,000 nuclei. 
Each nucleus is kind of compartmentalized. After four cycles, nuclei are evenly distributed in the interior of the cell. There are many nucleus in a single cell. This condition is called syncytium. What my guide found in her postdoc is that even though there's a common cytoplasm, there is, um, you know, discretization in terms of uh, sharing of things between individual compartments. Here you can see the nuclei are clearly defined. Now, after the eighth cycle, most nuclei move towards the cortex. During the fourteenth division, cell formation occurs. Furrows are formed around the nuclei, and when it reaches a certain depth, it pinches off and forms individual mononucleate cells. The first sign of differentiation is seen. An invagination is formed. The cells in the interior give rise to the internal organs. The peripheral layer of cells form the outer body that we see. The process is so synchronous. I mean, nuclei dividing, cells forming at the same time. I mean, this is just one process that we're looking at. And there are so many happening in a body. This is so cool. Okay. But what's the use of studying a fly? Oh, many. Flies are cool, you know. They have different types of cells which do different functions just like any other higher organism. Is it true that most of the human disease genes have a match in fruit flies? Yeah, diseases which include cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurological disorders, diabetes. Scientists are studying human diseases by just studying the genes in the fly. Not only diseases, but also identifying protein structures, immunity, biochemical pathways. There's so much to study, you know. Yeah, right. I know what you mean. Thanks, man, but I won't get an F now at least. May I have a message? Guess what? Test cancelled. But I had fun learning. Bye-bye.